Oakley, Oakley. Good evening, cares and heroines, and welcome to practicing programming in C, the uh, the stream in which we practice programming in C. It has been ages since I last did one of these, um, but everything seems to be kind of working okay. And uh, since I since I last did one, we've got a new internet connection, <laughs> so I um, I can hopefully stream at higher quality that I used to be streaming and have bumped up the quality. And also moved some stuff around. <laughs> um, yeah, bumped up the quality and I can actually stream at a much higher, higher speed than this. Although, I'm not really sure it's worth it, honestly. Because <laughs> uh, I'm doing it at this bit rate. And Twitch recommends doing it at these bit rates. I mean, I guess I could bump it up to 500 for 5,000. Let's just see that. See if it even applies. So, yeah, we're going, going a fair bit uh, higher. And there's the kilobits per second down here. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of like half of what I can actually handle. <laughs> Don't know if it would be worth going any higher. Uh, rescale out, but yeah, I think we figured out that you can't, you can't stream at a higher resolution than this. Can I change this at the moment? I can change that. Um, let's just see what medium will do. I think this affects the CPU usage coming on 32%. Let's just try medium. See if that does anything. Because I think because you, as you go slower, I think that's supposed to use up more of your CPU. Um, I mean, does that affect your frame rate as well, I wonder? I mean, it's possible it's not even taking effect while I'm streaming. Uh, yeah, that is very possible. Because <laughs> it does seem to be exactly the same. So let's leave it as it was. Um, I think the main thing really is that I'm just not, not dropping any frames at all, uh, which I wouldn't expect to be doing on this, um, on this new connection. So yeah, anyway, let's go for it. Uh, so the topic of today is uh, Cinera Config Planning. Uh, so for like years it feels like now, we've been using Cinera with no config. There's no no ability to like configure it. I mean, it isn't strictly true because we can like give it some information. <laughs> like you're not just flying blind. <clears throat> But uh, the way that you actually configure it is through um, command line arguments. So it's these kinds of things here. Um, and there is also uh, hard-coded stuff in, uh, in Cinera itself. So for example, we've got like this credentials array. This is just hard-coded. And it shouldn't be. It, this should be a thing that you can configure. We've also got a product info uh, array, I believe, yep. And we've also got the category medium. So we've got these kinds of arrays as well. Uh, color strings, that's going to be yeah, that's part of the program. Uh, so, yeah, we want to be able to configure this sort of stuff in a file. Uh, so that's uh, that's part one of it. Uh, part two of it is we want to be able to configure uh, multiple projects. I mean, I mean this is kind of self-evident here because you've got multiple you've got multiple different projects in here. Um, the thing to understand here is that a single instance of Cinera can only handle 
it can only process one project's worth of stuff at at once. Uh, so you need to like you need to run. Say like if you've got, uh, well, like this this set of stuff here. I think this whole set um, is for risky business. And here I split. I think I've split them up differently for handmade network and for the early access site. Uh, I think I think handmade network uses the book one. Is that true? In fact, I'm not exactly sure who uses what now. I'm pretty sure that I use. Yes, I definitely use Riskal. I definitely use this stuff here, Riskalanius. I definitely use computer organization and design. So yeah, I definitely use Coad and Reader on the early access thing, but originally we only had the book. But anyway, uh, the point of this is that uh, on Hamburg Networks server and on the early access on the on the server that runs the early access site. There needs to be like multiple instances of Cinera running uh, to actually handle all the, all the stuff, and they don't know. They don't like understand each other. They can't talk to each other. They don't know what each other's doing. Uh, so this config file stuff is going to also introduce the idea that you can um, you can have a single instance of Cinera handling multiple projects basically so that's that's the second part of it so the first part was uh it was at it was storing all of this stuff so all of these arrays and the second part was having multiple projects i think so let's uh i, th I think that's all that it was maybe i mean there might be more stuff uh, that we'll discover as we kind of keep going through this. Oh, including, yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, another part of the config idea is that you can include kind of 10 of them on HMN server. So you're going to have four for handmade hero, aren't you? Oh, actually, maybe not. <laughs> you're going to have you're gonna have bitwise, definitely. You're gonna have bitwise. You're gonna have. You're gonna have these dudes here. And then you probably that's gonna be six, isn't it? So then you're probably gonna have. You're probably gonna have book club here. And then. Uh, need four more. Okay, so maybe you have actually got. Co-ad reader risk and risk. So yeah, maybe maybe we did split that out. Because I don't think there's any other projects at all, is there? Because OBBG isn't on there. Uh, as far as I'm aware. No, OBBG was never on there. Uh, and sysadmin is just me. So yeah, maybe we both split, split them out. Um, template, event of the config, config location, hot reload, oh yeah, hot reloadability, that was another thing that I wanted it to be doing. Oh, th yes, there are actually a few more things actually I've just, just brought into mind, uh, config. to the config. I like how I keep I keep referring to it as the config. Um, but it's just the all I'm talking about there is the actual the actual struct. Uh, this guy here, uh, which just pulls information from all all sorts of places. Uh, yeah. So including. Tell you what. Let's pull this down. Let's make a bit of a list at the bottom of this file. Let's just organize the stuff together.
config. Uh, include uh, it, might, it, might, it might not be this syntax but um, or this keyword but that's kind of the idea um, what should we include config and if it's elsewhere config file location flag yeah let's have that down there um, probably C. There'll be a default, but uh, oh, there's a there's a citation of Intervaris himself here. <laughs> Contract file parsing pointers are null terminated directly into file memory. So I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was quite a while ago. We were thinking about how to actually. <laughs> I think we we're thinking about how to pass. I was like, how do you, <laughs> how do you do it? Copy file passing. Uh, consider like a version of an entire YouTube playlist channel so we can pull the proofs. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, interesting, I think this is actually, this is relevant actually. <laughs> Yeah, that is a feature that I think I would need to think about. Patreon access to private videos. Um, is that something I could, could configure? Put private videos in a random location. <laughs> I mean, it might not be relevant, but let's let's keep it down there. Put it down there just just in case. Sets uh, configuration HTML output. I don't think that's relevant. Custom query string config, and then we're down to the bottom. Right. Okay. So that's some of the notes that I'd already had written. Um, Code chat interested to see misc re risky risk code co-ed read a bit rise. Yeah, so you're just missing book, aren't you? So yeah, I think we were just originally because we hadn't really worked out <laughs> we hadn't worked out how exactly we we're gonna handle Oh actually it might not have even have been that. It might just have been that at first book club was only one there was only one book in the book club. And then we realised later on that we needed actually to to have multiple books, and it would have made sense to kind of group them in, in a sort of a sub project of their own. So I think that's what happened there. We started off with book, and then we later on just went, well, actually, <laughs> let's um, let's make these two other two other people. Um. So yeah. The idea that that I just that occurred to me that I didn't mention, uh, I mentioned the occurrence but not the actual uh, idea, was it's to do with templates. Um, I think that's it. Might it's kind of a bit separate from config itself, but it's it's something that I'd like to roll into this whole this whole kind of bit of development, uh, and the idea is. It's essentially like watching template files for changes and then just updating all the files that actually use that template. Um, so let's make a, make a note of that. Um, template file watching, I guess. So we do this sort of thing for HMML files and for asset files. Um, p 
put HML watch handle. So yeah, watch handle. So we've got watch handles for handmade markup language, which which is the annotation file, and for the asset files, it has various asset files. Of the SNDB, so we've got another watch handle. No. In fact, print watch handle would just show. Would that show that? Yes, yeah, so there's only two watch handle types. Right. Uh, it's HTML or it's WT asset. Uh, so that, yeah, it's just displaying. It's just printing out what the, what they are. So we'll probably want to have a watch handle for template files. Uh, so th what that would mean is that we'd have to store. We'd have to store template information in the database. Template for watching, so uh, and the reason I mentioned this is that uh, I'd like to keep the number of database versions uh, kind of to a minimum, really, because uh, each time you add something to the database, I sort of need to I need to bump the version number, and each time that I bump the version number, I need to make a new sort of update ver update uh, db thing uh, how do I do this yeah upgrade db so each time I bump the version number I need to make a new case in here that's just the way I've kind of been doing it so ideally I'd like to I'd like to roll as many changes as I can into into one version <laughs> Just to save, save having to mess about with this thing, basically. Uh, so yeah, the the config file thing. The part that's relevant to the config file is the multiple projects per instance. The part the part that's relevant to the template is the actual template stuff itself. Uh, yes, yeah, so we need some representation of the template. There's some kind of concise representation of the template that we could store in the database, uh, and then just kind of it'd be basically the same as the assets. Really, you just loop through them, and then just it'd be indexing into into the um, like the the entries, sort of the. Um, the project entries, I guess, um, for each video, be indexing into that to say, look, this template's changed. You just need to change this these bits of information uh, in these files. Uh, was there something else I, I uh, needed to do? I can't think of any other big things that we needed. Um, but there is up here. I mean, it's going to take a YouTube link with time to the Antarctica Guide. In order to do this, I think we figured out that I'd need to store the, the VOD ID in the database, which we don't currently store. Uh, Uh, support for non-video stuff. Yeah, right. And then for this, uh, I might actually need to add to the database the idea that something might not. Well, basically, a project type, for want of a better word. So you could have a project that is a that is a has the video type, and everything will currently be under the video type because that's all that, we, all that we know about at the moment but there could be like a, a newsletter type for example uh, I mean that could even be more generic just like I don't know article or just list of stuff uh, well textual list text maybe 
I don't know. Um, so yeah, we could store in the database the idea there's a project type. Uh, what's this? Fixed value template. Oh yeah, I did do that. Uh, add parameters to the project node to link to annotations in episodes. Uh, so that's this also here. Yeah, okay, so another potential thing. So I'll just explain that a bit. The idea here is that in one of your annotation files, you'd be able to write write a node that identifies one of these projects and uh, a timecode in that project and it produce a link to that thing. Now the config file, this whole config file and multiple projects in the database should hopefully enable this uh, because you'd be able to look up in the database to find this person uh, and then find you'd have stored in the database already like the, the URL and stuff that you need to to use to actually link to this thing and the title of it uh, so that should automatically happen um, the day the video is published Right, yeah, so for this, I think I was thinking uh, I want to augment the HTML markup. Um, basically, so it just contains in the video node this information, probably just in Unix time. Uh, basically the reason I, th I was thinking of doing it that way there's another way you could do it you could just do it by um, using the well basically polling YouTube for it basically <laughs> so rather than rather than writing it manually yourself you just use the the VOD ID to look up on YouTube what the date of the well the publication date was and then go with that um, I could have done that actually for for the other stuff. Um, so like here, I've got the VOD platform, YouTube. I've got the idea of this. I could conceivably have just said, um, just get the title, basically. <laughs> I could have said, when you, when you process this thing, uh, go and acquire the title from YouTube. Trouble with that is that it just slows it down basically, uh, and I try I try and like not introduce those sorts of slowdowns. Um, there's one thing that we need to do a YouTube API call for, and that is for um, privacy status. So. Can I show that at all, I wonder? So here's Hamid Hero. And you can see how kind of quick that processes. Um, I think I might be able to show you. Oh shit, yeah, I um, got a new ZSH version, didn't I? <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> where do I need to be? Oh, I don't need to be anywhere, do I? Right, which center? <laughs> Risky. Uh, center. Do I just? Yeah, I do just hard code it in there, right? So it's basically, it's this flag here. 
this is the ignore ignore privacy flag. Uh, I think let's just quit. If I now do this, you should see that it will just check the privacy each time. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. You can see that for each video, it's actually checking the privacy. <laughs> and there's like, what, 300 and odd episodes? Or is it 500? Is, what's how many are on now? Is it like 500 episodes or something? Yeah, 510. Now this checking for Handmade Hero is completely pointless because we already know. We know that none of them are actually private. <laughs> the whole of the whole of Handmade Hero is actually public. Uh, however, we need to... Well, Handmade Network needs to check this for risky business because risky business has the idea of early access essentially <laughs> so if you go to risky.tv i'm logged in currently uh, and this is also kind of this is also new the ability to log in i just that's what i've been doing for the past few months actually developing this ability um on this server i ignore privacy and I just generate it uh, and the way that I actually sort of gate access to it is by is by implementing this authentication thing and um, but Hamid Network doesn't have the idea of um, sort of conditionally allowing access to private or non-private videos um, I mean, it's kind of unfair to say that Hammered Network doesn't have it. It's really Cinema that doesn't have that ability. Cinema doesn't let the site know that uh, something is... It doesn't... It just doesn't have that sort of distinguishing thing. Like, it, it can't, like, produce a view that is for people who are eligible to access the stuff and a view for people who aren't it can only produce one thing uh, so Hamid network has to actually if it's going to if it's going to honor uh, the early access thing if it's going to act honor that then it has to actually perform this privacy check uh, and that was a very long-winded way of saying that um what was it to do with uh, oh, it was a time code, wasn't it? Yeah, the publication date. So that's a long-winded way of saying that one way I can do the, the uh, publication date <laughs> is by doing this process, doing this, doing these API calls and acquiring the thing. Also acquiring the titles. So these titles could have been acquired from doing that, that process of calling out to YouTube. Um, but as you can see, that took a long time to, to perform that whole, uh, to perform that pass. It took a lot longer than it did um, when you actually ignore privacy, right? So I think uh, in order to do that thing that, um, <laughs> I love it when it's far shrugs. <laughs> um, in order to do this, that the RISD was asking about, I think it'd be cool to actually just add add into this uh, like a sort of I don't know date or something, and then that would just be like some sort of Unix time, uh, and then and this this is actually acquired uh, from YouTube. Uh, can I actually tell you how I do this? I mean, the way I do, the way that I pull this in, is by using a program called Astub, and this does do an, uh, a call out to YouTube, uh, and it basically just 
it knows what the hero playlist is and it looks into it looks in the titles of those um the videos for this number and if it finds it it pulls it all in and it sets um it sets the id actually it sets the id and it sets the title so this is all i need to type in, in order to produce in order to, to produce this line i mean it's actually you actually end up with this right uh, and i think also there's a there's a um did i change the medium i didn't change the medium uh no I think I changed the medium for the for the stream before. Yeah, so that was set to admin. That doesn't get set automatically. Um, but yeah, you just you just get this. Uh, but you get this whole thing by just typing this. Um, but I feel like it's it's kind of nicer to do that one call for that one thing up front rather than doing like. You know that that whole thing for every for everybody, in order to acquire information that we could already have found, basically. Uh, what did I change here? <laughs> Beauty. I think that must have been testing. That must have been testing the asset, <laughs> the asset file stuff. Okay. So yeah, I think I might um, latest. Oh yeah, oh, right yeah for Hamid Heroes last last thing. Um, so yeah, I think I might actually make a feature request to Insofar as for HMM, HMM Lip, uh, which is basically um, yeah some ability just. Uh, it's just another field basically another field in the in the video node for um publication date i don't know what we call it but yeah something just just a way to put that in um in order to actually do this this thing here um Yeah, we can figure that out anyway. And I don't think that actually affects the config uh, at all. I don't think it yet, yet affects the config. Uh, also, the database. I don't think it immediately affects the database. Uh, or does it? It might do, actually. <laughs> it might affect the database. Uh, and even if it doesn't affect it, even if it's not strictly necessary at the moment, actually no, sorry, it will. Yeah, we will. We will want to have the data data there, uh, so that we can easily do. So we can easily produce the index page. Because the the whole, I mean, I could be arguing that we don't need to store the title of things, the title of videos, um, but we do actually store it. And the reason we store it is so that we can produce this page here. Um, so if we do store the date, then we could store that information. Uh, we could um, we could generate that information here without needing to then repass the HTML file. Should be easy enough. Do you want it to cast star? I think I might like it as an int actually, or as a time t. I'm, I might like it as a time t, uh, if that's in the standard, it, what or whatever you know whatever a whatever a time t is. Only because. That would give us the ability to sort the thing. Um, uh, 
Yeah, because if it's a time cheat, it'll be eight bytes, won't it? Whereas if it's a car, uh, it would be. I mean, you could store it as like the long form date, or you could store it as the. You could store it as the individual digits, like a string of the digits. Um, I mean, what is the time now, actually? Um, how do you do this? So the day is already this long, this many characters. How many characters is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so you already be, you'd have to store this in ten digits, ten characters. Which would be ten bytes. Yeah, I th I think. I think it probably pr be preferable to store as an int. Um. And then you just convert it to whatever you want. Uh, when you want it, I mean, I do already have a. A conversion function in here. It's like time code is in the is in the function name. Time code to seconds. So that takes a time code. <laughs> okay. So that does take a car. <laughs> I think I was imagining it's a car starts to call use my brain a bit on how to add this one. Ah right. Is it? Uh So that's interesting. I don't have the, I don't have the the uh, conversion the other direction. I've got the conversion from a car to an int, or a car star rather. Um, wonder why. Maybe there's already a standard lib um, function that I that I use to do the other direction. I mean, what do I use the what do I use this for actually? Time go to second on the on no time. Oh right. <laughs> oh that's interesting. So I see what you're saying about everything else being a car star. <laughs> How else do I use that anno time? I mean, surely I, I always use that. Am I just always converting that? <laughs> do I go to seconds? Do I go to seconds? Uh, I mean, it's printing out a, as a... as a car there. As a string. Uh, I mean, it's possible it's not... Yeah, while I'm looking for this, it's possible. It's actually not always going to be... It's not always going to look like this. So that's printing out that. That's copying string. So yeah, it's just a printout. So the time code. Hold on a second. In, into the references array. So that's going to be talking about this up here. 11.32. So how do I get 11.32 exactly? Hang on a second. Time code to seconds. Colons. Right. So it's not actually, it's not, a, it's not a um, Unix time code. Uh, 
number of seconds since the Unix, whatever it's called. This is actually, it's actually one of these guys. I see. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we're just going to be using this plane here. We use it plane here as well. I don't store this in the database, but I do store it in the I do store it in the index file, don't I? Uh, where's the index file? The index file is going to be under the base directory. Actually, it's probably code, isn't it? Yeah, I do store that in here. And I store it as a number of seconds. I'm just sort of weighing up here, <laughs> like, I'm just trying, trying to, like, I guess, kind of back rationalize why we why we decided to do it as cars. I guess it's used mostly as cars, isn't it? Um Yeah, it's more often used as cars. Well it's not though is it really? If you think about it. <laughs> Cause for each of these people there's one of these. Okay, I've got this. I guess one argument is that these things are going to tend to be less than eight bytes long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I mean, they're not really though, are they? <laughs> You know, because when you when you get down to like one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, maybe they are actually. <laughs> so it's seven bytes for that. Uh, call it a day. Hang on, let's just go to um, here actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that, that comes out to be four characters. Yeah, I mean, maybe we just, we do save a bit of space, don't we? <laughs> you know, in storing it that way. For the purposes of this, though, this original form is a string for the file. Yeah. Um. For the purposes of storing the dates, I think all things considered, I think I'd store it as an int. I think that's how I do it. In the, I'd store it in the database as an int. Uh, 
uh, and the reason for that would be I mean it's a fixed size thing isn't it you know when you've got a when you're storing something in a database and you want to have the entries be the fix be a fixed size it's kind of handy to have your data well I mean, it's necessary to have your data in a fixed sized thing and an int gives you that automatically so I'd store it like that um, yeah and then only for only for displaying it would I convert it in the files are going to be like publication date I think it probably would yeah it would be yeah that's that's probably how I would actually um, how I would do it uh, and I think that I think that YouTube actually provides it in that format I'm not sure if I could actually see that very easily. Actually, let's let's just have a quick go. <laughs> um, going to buffer kill quotes. Um, actually, it's YouTube, isn't it? Video is private. Yeah, so we should be curling some stuff here, uh, and this should be pulling in some stuff. So I think this will pull in the thingamajig. This will pull in the publication status, and I think as a part of the publication status, you also actually get get told the publication date. Uh, so I could actually print out this this curl thing, but before I do that, I just need to be uh, away from keyboard for just a couple of minutes. Bear with me.
So uh, while I was away, I actually had a had a, had a remembered another thing that I would like in the HTML format uh, in the video node, and that thing is basically an output path. So currently, uh, the output path is basically uh, it's basically fixed, and it's sort of programmatically figured out. Um, kind of based on the input stuff uh, and the input stuff isn't really changeable if you know what I mean like you can't really you can't really configure it in a very flexible way I do do this though so for handmade hero and in interesting on windows we do actually have this bit of configuration stuff here so basically all this means you can see it's the alt. This is the alt URL prefix. This currently just straight up replaces the project ID in the player pages output directories. Yes, yeah, so that's just exactly what it what what it says basically. The project ID is code and intro to C, right? So usually you just see that um like the URL of a video is usually gonna be um why is that still loading? Is that just because it was paused? Audio render error. Oh right, that'll be because I want using Jack. That's fine. Um, will that have done it? Yeah. Basically, what was happening there was that I think I was on this. I was on this time code. I saw, yeah, I mean, I I went to here so that I could actually tweet it to Alex Austin. <laughs> I could tweet this link to him. And then when I reloaded this thing, because I was halfway through the video, it actually started off at this time code. Yeah, you can see that it starts off there. That's all, that was good happening there. Whereas usually, in order to reset that, you go to the bottom, go to the end one. Uh, usually you just start off the video and it's not playing so that's all that's going on there um, but you can see can I show this at all yeah right so usually in fact you probably can't even see that hopefully you can see the bottom this bottom area here um, ordinarily you would see so you can see the code is there it's like guide or org forward slash code code is the name of the project ordinarily um, for all of the other people you'd see that where it says day 0 16 it would say code 0 16 so you should be able to see for a handmade chat for example it's just chat 001 uh, same with ray 0 thingamajig risk the same well actually risk is different uh, sorry, misc. Um, that what is that doing exactly? Uh, is that because the, the unit have I somehow have I wangled it so that <laughs> if the unit is empty, it just uses the file name directly or something? Um, yeah, there's something something a bit weird about. Um, I'm not exactly 100% sure what's going on there, but uh, one of the things that will be useful about uh, having having the ability to put in your HTML file the actual full output path is that you could have a separate representation of the kind of chronological order of things from the actual kind of where it appears basically and you can see that sort of manifest itself here um, <clears throat> This basic Emacs tutorial happened in like 2015 or something. 
the 30 million line problem happened last year in 2018 I mean this kind of does it could potentially tie into the publication date honestly uh, yeah I mean that could be a further way <laughs> that could actually be a further way of um, separating out the idea of the chronolog the chronology <laughs> being kind of enforced by the file system um, if that makes sense because currently that's just how it works it's just like you know it's sorted by the uh, how can I show this oh it's this this thing again uh, actually no I want to see misc so yeah this basic Emacs file existed years ago this existed only since last year but the way that I named it is just like this is alphabetically before this uh, and because that is the case, you just end up with them being sorted like this. Uh, let us just say, for example, that I wanted I wanted these people to be to end up at the actual URLs that they're still at, but I wanted them to be in a different order. <laughs> I. I could do that if I uh, separated out the idea, basically. If I separated them out, separated the idea of the file, the file name, and the the input file name, and the output destination file name, basically. Um, so yeah. Uh, All that being said, I think I'd like to do another <laughs> a second um, feature request insofar as for HTML lib, which is just in in these guys. It's just like I don't know output output. Well, I mean that output output could probably just suffice actually, and this is just optional. If you put something in, it just it just sticks this person, uh, you know, at the URL that you specify, basically. And that will be a car. <laughs> uh, yes, and I would store that in the database as well. So I'd separate out, so I'd probably just change the database. Um, it will be a DB entry, won't it? So the DB entry for yeah, you can see like all the deep, all the different versions. You end up with different like versions of the of the structs. That's another reason, as I was mentioning earlier, that I'd like to try and keep the number of database versions to a minimum. So the file name, yeah. Well, that's the, that's the asset. Um, I think so. DB entry three is a DB entry four, <laughs> or rather. A DB entry 4 is a DB entry 3. And a DB entry 3 is one of these guys. So link offsets, size, base file name, title. So yeah, I'd basically be talking about augmenting the entry, the entry to have like an output file name as well. And also if you, if you look at this, I'm, I'm doing like base max base file name length plus one the reason I'm doing plus one is just so I can like have it null terminated but this was all I did this all before I even knew about like length strings so that length strings are just a thing that Casey has mentioned he, he uses it on Handmade Hero uh, uh, and he, he recently just well literally like just at the weekend he was using length strings in in his tokenizer for his 
uh, basically it's an asset tag file, essentially, asset metadata file. Uh, another length string is just, it's literally, it's literally a struct uh, that's like a length and uh, I think Casey calls it a data. I think I use it, I call it a base in my thing. Uh, and I have used length strings myself in, in other things. Uh, but I didn't know about those when I sort of was specking out the database format. So that's what all these plus ones are all about. I think as a part of this change, I think I'd probably, well, actually, I've got to be honest with you, changing the size of that. What is that length? It's 31, yeah. I mean, I guess I could be cheesy and just sort of, I could avoid bumping the DB version number by just increasing all of these by one and taking away the plus ones from here. I could just do that. Uh, but then I'd have to, elsewhere, I'd have to actually pull pull them in from the database as strings, as length strings, and not as, like, zero terminated ones. Uh, yeah. So why did I go on that? Oh, it's talking about the, what I'd have to add to the database entry, wasn't it? Yeah, so just add. I just said the output file name. That's what I'd be adding. Uh, but we were going to look at the the curling, weren't we? We're going to see what YouTube returns to us. So, yeah, right. So it returns, yeah, you can probably just see how cheesy this thing is here. And you could probably actually guess what YouTube actually returns to you. Uh, I mean, maybe you can't, but it's a JSON payload, essentially. But I don't bother to pass it as JSON. I simply, all I do is, I just seek, seek, the, seek this, <laughs> and then I seek to the privacy status. <laughs> and you can see that I seek to after the privacy status and I just sort of pull in whatever that is uh, <laughs> up to the the next double bracket double uh, quotes so it's super like I don't know what you, how you say it just kind of naive but <laughs> Just very minimal, basically. It's literally just pulling out the one thing that you need. And then you're away. Um, but I suppose, actually... Well, no, I'm not going to be using... Uh, I'm not going to be using the API response for the uh, publication date anyway, because that's the whole point of this whole conversation, <laughs> is that we're going to add it. Uh, add it in the, the actual source uh, HTML file. Uh, but bit of a hack. That's that's the term. Yeah, bit of a hack. <laughs> uh, but we should be able to just print this thing out. Uh, uh, so yeah. Uh, what is it going to be? Actually, how is this? If video response void is equal to zero, I think, does it not terminate this thing, actually? Seek buffer for string. I think seek buffer for string. Let me just check how that does work, actually.
Oh, both is greater than the location. Just want to make sure that this is actually not terminated. Switch position. It might not be not terminated. We got the size. So let's just print out this print it out like this. Taking it so long. Is that just how long it takes to build or something? <laughs> uh, yeah. So now we need to do. each of these people we should actually get a printout of the actual whole JSON payload. So what do we get? Get the ID, get an ETAC. You can see the privacy status there. Public. But we're not getting the publication date are we? I wonder if that's just a scope that you need to. Can you actually do that? Can you can you give it a scope? Uh, I mean, I'm just thinking in terms of how Patreon's API works. Cause I've recently been using that, and you can give it like different things. Yeah. Okay. So part status ID equals that. Blimey. Insofar as it's on fire. Watch this watch it just say they're like out of sync with something and uh modified HTML to YouTube.c. That is unfortunate. Um what's that gonna be? I mean that cinerus.c is probably just gonna be just that printout. HTML to YouTube. How do you do this now? Is it diff? Yeah. So the only difference was in cinema.c, it was just that printout. And HTML to YouTube, it was just increasing the arena size. Is that actually what solved the problem? So I remember that. Um, when I was converting one of the risky business episodes, it might have been it might have been one of the book club ones. Um, there was a problem. Uh, one of the particular episodes, it just, it just couldn't convert it. And I think even maybe after this change, it still couldn't convert it. So I don't think that even helped anything. So I could just stash that change and just just drop it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't need that printer anymore, do I? Right, HTML lib. Uh, Got a new version of HTML Lev. Long publication date. It's a long call. An output. Wow, it's got both. Uh, unquote. Unquote length. I wonder if that was necessary for the for doing a long. For the metadata output. Oh right, yeah, the output string. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, Insofaras. 
probably pulled that without committing stashing. I suppose I probably could have done, yeah. But I just don't know how. I just don't know get well enough to do um, uh, to do that. Um, but yeah, it's not important, is it? Anyway. Uh, so how do I actually get that stuff in? Um, you need to go to thing, but you don't. You need to go to. Oh, it's. Set this age again. It'd be nice if you could just in, in place just open that guy up. I think what you do is you make, don't you? Yeah, and then you copy from lib you copy them both don't you, you copy A you copy them both to there Check the read me. <laughs> to build it, run making it, spit out HTML A. Oh, is that because I did take, make clean? Yeah, that was what it was. <laughs> so yeah, you copy those those guys. What? Oh, right. <laughs> HTML A. <laughs> And hm lib dot h. Right there we go. <laughs> so yeah, you saw that we lost. We lost that when I opened it. Right. So Google API. We want to see. Uh, what scopes we can actually get. So, we're going for YouTube videos. Don't ask me why it isn't hmmlib.a. <laughs> I wonder what Enzo Vars is talking about. Uh, Enzo Bart is talking about. Why? <laughs> anyway. Videos update. Videos report, videos rate. Returns a list of videos that match the API request parameters. What am I, what am I pulling here? So the key is going to be. Uh, API key. Right, yeah. Ideally, I shouldn't be showing this on stream, honestly, but fuck it. But the ID, so that's going to be the ID. So I'm getting the part status. It's videos. Deletes the YouTube video. Videos list. Updates video videos. The part parameter specifies a common separate list of one or more video resource properties that the API response will include. If the parameter identifies a property that contains child properties that are including the response, for example, the videos, the channel ID, title, treatment tags, going to so use a part snippet, all those properties. Okie dokie. Come in, there's a one more video resource properties. So is there a list of these possible properties? The snippet property contains the channel ID. What am I pulling in? I'm pulling in the status. Am 
I'm still printing out the thing. No, of course I'm not. So with a bit of luck, we should see a bit more information in here. Oh shit, published out, so they return it like that, do they? Yeah, so it's not a Unix timecode thing. I think still though, I'd still prefer to store it in Unix time. Because if you think about it, right? Um, I'm just thinking in terms of time zones here. Like, I don't understand why privately reinserted was happening there, by the way. Is that just because, because where's the, where's the privacy? Oh, the privacy isn't even in this snippet. <laughs> and that doesn't look like a complete JSON response, does it? Items is that. Oh shit, is that just because, have I just given it a limit? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's gonna be, that's gonna be what's going on there. <laughs> this, I mean, you can see this is so cheesy. Like, I'm not even curling properly here. Um, <laughs> yeah, since I did this, I've done some more, I've done an actual, an actual thing that does actually curl in a way that's a bit more flexible, basically. And it just, it just, uh, it just allocates memory. It just allocates what it needs to actually, to, to, actually, to actually store the stuff. Uh, if I just give it another, yeah, you can see that some of them, it, you, you're getting more information. I think I think I spotted some with some, yeah, privately reinserted code. So yeah, it just doesn't, it's just not stored enough. But anyway, that's that's by the by. Um, although, I mean, having said that being by the by, I should actually. <laughs> Just curl things properly. <laughs> um. Oh well, I mean, it's allocating slash claiming memory because I mean, we we still we could still probably use the actual claim buffer stuff. We could still use the uh, the memory arena. Right, we could still use that. Uh, I mean, also, honestly, uh, we could probably, <laughs> rather than, uh, rather than doing this, RCO, RCO being a full, we could actually just make it reallocate some more, some more flipping arena space. Yeah, I think when I, when I did all this, I just hadn't even. I think I kind of knew that realloc was a thing, but I just hadn't used it, so I just didn't bother. <laughs> it was just like, you know, allocate four, allocate four mega startup, and then that's your lot. Do I use realloc anywhere? Yeah, I mean, I do for the template tags. I probably use it for the um, assets as well. I use it for the watch handles. And for the asset landmarks, yeah. And the assets themselves. Yeah. So that whole that whole memory arena stuff is just it's just old news basically. And the curling code is a remnant of that, I guess. So as a part of this I mean it's not it's not gonna affect the database. It's not gonna affect the config. It's not really going to affect anything, but in terms of just making the program a bit better, I should just curl it into the 
uh, I should make it adapt to the size that we actually need. Um, but yeah, we saw this, didn't we? We saw that you get the published at value, which comes in like this. Um, zero, 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 Z. And that doesn't look like a legitimate time zone to me, does it? Maybe that is. Maybe that's just plus zero. So it's like UT thingamajig, UTC. Maybe that's what that's saying. Uh, and I mean, if that is what it's saying, well, even if it's not, like wh whatever time zone that is saying, it's just like, well, you know, whenever something is published, you know, it's always published at that time, isn't it? Like, if you publish something after that time, it's going to appear. You know, it's time. It's published at time. It's going to be after that, after the previous person, whatever time zone it's in. So there's no need for us to store. We don't need to store any time zone information. I don't suggest. Uh, additionally when we actually display the thing uh, if it's shown you know if we're if we're storing the time in unix time unix time is isn't that at utc or is that even yeah i think unix time is utc isn't it You know, so basically, Unix time of zero Yeah, it's in the seconds that have lasted since midnight on Thursday the 1st of Jan 70 in Universal Coordinated in, in UTC Minus leap seconds <laughs> Yeah, you can sort of see here is a formatting that looks kind of similar to YouTube's published at thing. 2019.02.05 and then T, then the, t uh, the, the, the clock time. It's different though that we've got plus zero zero colon zero zero as opposed to dot zero 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 Z. Um, well, yeah, I don't suggest that we need to bother to store um, you know, we don't need to preserve anything other than just like I think Unix time should just suffice, really. So, really, I would what I'd want to be doing is converting that published at time to the actual Unix time in seconds and stick that in my HTML file I mean it kind of begs, begs the question though like why why do YouTube send it like this Especially because it's like, because of the zero 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 thing, I think that is supposed to suggest that it is just at Unix time.
You are at time zone. I'm just wondering if it's like a like a set a set thing that actually comes with the time zone. Very time zone with colon to necessary precision. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. What's this? I'll put it in RFC 3339 format. Oh. Right, these might be the kind of things I'm talking about. <laughs> Example is that in ISO 8601. Ah, hang on a minute. Let me just see what YouTube says that they're reporting it as. Published after. What was it saying? It was the published at. We need a different version. Well, mind you, shouldn't it just shouldn't it just search all of them? Published at. Just let's have a look at snippet. We've, we've been told that that exists. Uh, so snippet. Yeah, right. Published at. Videos list. This new project is a channel ID, title, description, text, and category ID properties. Pass new info and channel ID properties. String. ID channel ID. Execute. Like, how does that not even mention published at? Take publish date with YouTube API version 3. Uh, new date. I guess I don't see anything. Pass the result under the date value. This. is actually using the date methods from W3 schools. Okay, so it's date, is it? Yeah, I mean, I guess whatever format it is, it's just it's just the format that it is, that it is isn't it? Um. <laughs> Annotate. So that's I, and then format. I say. Th Format equals date, seconds, or an S R? I don't know. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, but it's still exactly the same. Um, but yeah, anyway, I think I think I would just I probably would just convert this. I'd probably convert that to Unix time and store it as an int. 
or a long rather. Um, and also, we've had kind of had that question. Oh, let's get use this. I so possibly str uh, yeah string p type yeah strip. I don't know. Don't know how you pronounce that. It's ISO eight six zero oh one. Right, yeah, this looks the same, doesn't it? UTC uh, colon. Well, it's not colon, was it? It was a dot. Turn the characters. But yeah, strip uh, strip time would be what I'd be uh, what I'd use in the um, in the stub generator. Uh, and also, yeah, as I say, the the question has already been answered by um, insofar as he just gave us the gave us the solution. Uh, uh, publication, yeah, because it's long because we're storing it like that. So yeah, I just need to put it in the HTML lib, HTML file as the as the uh, actual. Unix time thing. That's all I need to do. Uh, yeah, because presumably, if I if I was to just store it like that, HMM lib would just be like, sorry, can't do that. So yeah, that question has been answered. We're going to be doing doing that like that. Claim buffer one kilobyte. We don't need to print that out. Right. So that's where we were. So just call these properly. Let's make a note of the new things we've got actually. We've got the um, publication date and we've got um the Output your output path, wasn't it? So we've got these new things. So these are things that we'd like to store in the database, I'd suggest. So let us template file watching. That's kinda of, I mean that's kinda of to do with database as well actually. Curl things properly is just that's just a separate separate issue. So yep, let's plan we want to do the config. I'll probably have to go through that a bit more. Um so yeah, like a DB entry. Just just add Adds to DB entry uh, these guys. Why is that so far indented exactly? Oh, is that just. That's how far it goes? Okay. Add to DB entry, publication date, and output. We also want to add. The um, we do want to add the templates. We do want to figure out how to like the how to represent the templates. Um, template representation uh, for the purposes of like auto updating. Well, I mean. For the purposes of updating uh, HTML files, um, I mean, we already do that, don't we? But it's really the the crux of it. Really is. Um, Oh, 
for me. I suppose in some ways we do it already, but um, what I'm driving at here is if we have a representation of the templates, then what we already do could be sped up. It could happen as quickly as the as the asset updating happens, uh, if possible. If it doesn't need to generate any more, if it doesn't need to regenerate the HTML file, um, which is possible that it might not need to do. Uh, depending on how we implement it. Basically what I'm, what I'm driving at there is the stuff in the templates um, let's see if I can show you um, so we've got templates Templates, uh, oh actually there's no templates for this is the That is unfortunate Do I have any templates to hand that I can just show you? <laughs> uh, should be okay to show you a Risky businesses template I think Let's Just double check that that is actually going to do some stuff Oh it's checking the privacy Yeah, right let me just um, Where's that? Let me just take that back. Oops. Yeah, so that's back as it was. Uh, Vim. Where is this stuff? Is it on the HMN? Oh yes, Cinera. Let me just CD that for there first. Right. So basically, right. In terms of having to regenerate the HMML file, the things that it has to, it can only acquire from the HMML file. Uh, well, it's definitely Cinema Search, right? That needs to get generated. Cinema Project, that could be acquired from the database. It probably does, does just get uh, pulled in from the database. Cinema project ID is likewise. Uh, Cinema CSS main likewise will be just stored in the database because it's in the asset block. Cinema project, the same as this guy. Cinema includes. That does actually have to gen. Well, actually, no. Um, I think that would also just be. Uh, it wouldn't need to generate, it wouldn't need to re-pass the HML file. So basically, if the template were to change, like if you were to just change, if for example you were to add to the header a class, right, you add, you add, add that class to the header. Cinera spots that you've done the change and then it has to um, it has to kind of repack the template right uh, and then it has to actually propagate it has, has to make all the all the videos that have got this who use this template or well, it's not videos in this case in this case, it's just the index file, uh, as in like the the search page. I suppose it made more sense if I just, if I showed you one of the players. So for the player, this is this is the template for for a player page. Uh, what is it? Index. Yeah, right. So I need to be. Hold on a second. Index template. Why are they all index? Oh right. I only open the index. 
ones. Right. So here we go. And I've only got one player. I've got a player for the risk. I've got a player, a separate player for risky. And that's because that's because I need to represent this. I need to have a different basically I style this kind of fancily. Um You can see that I style this in this way uh, with like these two different colors. Whereas like with these these other guys, it's just whatever whatever they come out as. So they can all be the same, but risky business has to have its own set special template because risky business is a special is a special snowflake. Um, So yes, the menus have to be the menus in the player have to be generated from the HTML file. We don't have any representation of that uh, out, you know, separate from the HTML file. So the title that can be acquired from the database. So basically, let's just say that we just add something here. We just add class equals stuff. We add that. Cinema spots the change, and it just goes through all of the um, all of the HTML files, or all, all, all of the entries that it knows are associated with this template, which will just be the all of the risky business people. It just goes through all of those, and it has to update this. It only has to update this information, right? So I'd want to be able to represent, I'd want to be able to, you know, I'd want to be able to say, basically, don't bother to regenerate the entire HTML file. You know, don't bother to repass that. All you need to do is just, I mean, it probably, we'd probably be doing a thing, right? Where we, it's, well, it'd be quite similar to the template packing, right? The way the packing works is just that, it's like for, for each of these tags, for, for each of these, um, for each of these cinema things, so for each of these guys here, there's like, it, it just basically says, it basically run length encodes it, it says, um, there's gonna be this number of characters before this, and then there's gonna be this, right? For each person. And then for the last person, it's just, you know that's the last person and then just just after this person write out the rest of the file that's basically how the packing happens so I'd probably want to be saying for this case here like there will be a portion that is somehow would somehow represent this portion between this tag here and this tag down here, this this information from probably here to here would be represented somehow, and we'd have to be able to say we'd have to be able to determine whether whether that has changed, uh, and then just change that part in the actual thing you know just pro only process that bit I don't know if any of that made any sense at all <laughs> I don't know if it was at all a help to actually show the template um, but that's kind of like the the gist of what I'm thinking about doing I'm basically doing a fi an efficient way of actually propagating this well not propagating but just applying applying this edit to all of the HTML files. Arch. Yeah, dude. Yeah. How did you know? How, how could you tell? Oh, could you tell by this? <laughs> oh, actually, maybe you could have told tell by the um, ZSH thing as well, actually. Uh, oh, crap. Yeah. Uh, where would you have seen that? Yeah, this. <laughs> Unix enhancements are. That's such a lie. Unix, Unix enhancements so are. Um, 
Yeah, so in order to in order to do that updating, I'd need to be able to represent the template in the database. Uh, somehow, for the purpose of updating the HTML files. Uh, minimally, I guess. Well, for the purpose of efficiently updating HTML files when templates change, basically. Uh, and I think just the other day, actually, I was just thinking that in order to represent that, you know, those portions, the portions between tags, I was thinking that I could probably just hash them, right? And then when it, when, uh, when the template changes, you actually go through uh, and you sort of repack the template, hashing the hashing the sections between the tags, seeing if they're different between uh, you know between the the existing template and the new template, and then only updating the bit that you need to actually well you use that to to, to 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 determine what you need to actually update. Um, yeah, however, there might be bits that you actually need to regenerate, right? So it needs to be able to figure out, say like if there's another tag that's used, it doesn't have the information that, um, it doesn't have the information stored in the database. Uh, there might be cases that it has to actually go in and Repass the HTML, HTML file. Um, in which case, you just have to do it. Basically, there's no efficient way of. There's no way around that. You just have to do it. <laughs> I think. Um, yes. So I think we'll have to add that representation so we can do that efficiently. Uh, add to the DB entry, publication data, and output. Um, also, I think. In terms of this um, this idea from Michael uh, Michael Campagnaro, um, support for non-video stuff, I think we could kind of uh, get ahead of ourselves. Well, not get ahead of ourselves. We'll just get get a bit of a jump on the whole thing by adding to the uh, the DP DB project. Really, if we've got that. I don't even know if we have a DB project. I'm sure we do actually. Let's just have a, have a look. So I think it's just this, isn't it? D DB header entries. Entries header, yeah. Block ID entry, yeah, right. The count is going to be the number of number of entries in that project. So this is basically for a project. So handmade hero is going to have one of these. This is going to have to all all change so that I can actually so that I can actually store multiple. I basically want to be storing multiple of these really. So in order to store multiple of these. I'll need like a header that tells me how many of how many of these there are stored, and we'll probably also want to be storing in here, like um, basically the parent, I guess, because we need to be we need to be able to to represent a hierarchy of projects. And I think the way to do that is just by storing with each project their parents. So DB header entries. Or there may be renamed. Um, add to the DB header entries. The uh, 
parent. Uh, what else was there? <laughs> Enter the DBNG, the publication date and the output, the template representation. Oh yeah, the type. So basically, um, this would be, I mean, currently we just support video, but we could actually support newsletter. Or, you know, let's just question mark it. You know, there could be a more sort of, there could be a more general purpose name for it, of which a newsletter could be, could be one use of that type. I mean, it could even end up just being like, some of it's just not like non chronological, if you know what I mean. Because, like, the whole thing about this whole video thing is that it's, um, you know, you, you kind of write, you're writing it, it's all, it's all based around like, it's based around this, this sort of a thing here. You know, like at, at 46 seconds into the video, this happens. Three minutes and four seconds into the video, that happens. But in a newsletter, there is no concept of like time. It's just like it's just it's just a newsletter, isn't it? <laughs> so I might want to add to the DB entry headers that notion of a type. Uh, publication data and the output. The output will will give us oh we want the um converting a youtube link to with timestamp so we also want to add to the db entry the video id which we already we already have that stored we already have that in the html files we already have uh, we already actually get that what well, i think we actually did i find out if we store that in the index file No, we don't. We just store the day, the the um the name. So this name here will actually be the output name. I reckon. Because that is the that is the name that that the index page actually wants to know about. Um and the sorting of it will be determined by the actual order in which the in the in which the content appears in the file. I think. Uh, yeah. Oh, description for Hamid here. That's just uh, admin stuff. Usually, we have to. Yep. I'll link it to time codes. So yeah, you see what I was saying about the parent. That's where this kind of stuff comes into play. Uh, um, yeah, we'd be, we'd be referring to this. You know, you'd have to have to be able to go you know, traverse down the traverse down the people down the family tree in order to um, to find the thing you're after. Uh, and another, uh, another thing that I think I was thinking about this was um, so we have there are multiple. I mean, there are more projects in Hamid Network than there are in that have annotations basically one of which includes remedy bg right so we've got remedy bg here what i would like to be able to do is to just well i mean i've already got the idea of it basically mark up the uh you mark them up mark up a project with a tilde and I mean currently it just ends up appearing 
Um, like the following. It ends up appearing like this, right? It's coloured like that. It would be cool if, when you do this, you actually end up with a link to the Remedy BG page, if it exists in the in the instinct in in the instance with which we're associated. I mean, here in handmade. Uh, heroes guide. I mean, maybe we could actually. I'll tell you what, we could actually have fallbacks, couldn't we? So you could could sort of say, um, if remedy BG is known. You know, if that exists in our instance of the system, then when you see this, I'll put a link to this URL, which is like a URL that's, you know, it's part of our system, part of our environment. But if we don't have, if that doesn't exist in our instance, then fall back to other websites, basically. Oh, actually, hang on a minute. Yeah, the, the cheesy thing about that, actually, though, is um, yeah, if we don't have the if we don't have them communicating with each other, then we'll just end up in a situation where, like everybody, is just like configuring other websites stuff basically <laughs> which sounds a bit cheesy to me it might be cooler if you know you could just like do calls out to other instances of Cinera to say look do you do you know about this person here and then they can just say back to you like yeah we know about them this is where you'll find their page I mean that's kind of not a bad idea actually I don't think <laughs> although it would mean it'd mean that we'd need I mean Cinera itself already, already does stay alive but we need a way to actually communicate between different instances uh, so I think we need to separate out the the communication part from the the actual generation. I think we need to do that. Let me just make a note of that actually. Um, part of the DB. So that was to do with this, wasn't it? To link it to time codes. To think about. I mean, it's kind of yeah, it's kind of complex, isn't it? Uh, could it be? Jesse, <laughs> how's it going? So one is this Cinera may be able to call <laughs> other instances to see if they know about <laughs> a given project. Uh, 
if yeah and then have with um, the kind of destination sort of URL I guess I mean obviously for this particular instance this particular example here I mean it's not exactly it's not really to do with this even is it it is only to do with the tilde um, I suppose implicit in all of this though <clears throat> is that whether we do this or not we've got the idea that we're going to actually configure you know projects that don't even have any annotations basically <laughs> so that just just simply for the purposes of you know linking <laughs> you know so these these things here actually become links somehow whether it's just in the references menu. Why is that sluggish? Oh, look at my CPU usage. What's uh, what's going on here? <laughs> was that literally just caused by, what was that caused by? Oh, are you joking? Was that by Cute Browser? I think it was, wasn't it? So it's not being shown. We're at like 36% averaged. I just load up, just show, cute browser. Is it to do with Casey's, um, is it to do with this? Oops, don't wanna show that. So now we're back down to 39. <laughs> Dude. Now we're way up to 95. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So this is all the same. Let's just say for the sake of argument that... Because it could be me, couldn't it? So that isn't... That isn't a problem. And this was the page that we were on. Yeah, it's probably Casey's thing, isn't it? It's just tanking my... <laughs> Can you, um... <laughs> How do you disable sort of stuff? Can you just sort of say, just JavaScript don't do anything? Q is ready. That's me, isn't it? Application. Yeah, I mean this this is way off topic here. <laughs> so JavaScript here, instance performance. Yeah. Anyway, who cares? HH Live Network. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um just to go off that page so some optimized rendering right there um is he webgl or something do we panic i'm going to put oh no is it jesse's panicking i don't know i think we might have to bring it up on a pre-stream because i mean it <laughs> What else could it be? <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> I 
Um, I'd say don't panic. Also, I also feel like there's a song. Isn't there a song called Don't Panic? Harmonic 303. 1-3. I mean, that isn't really what I was thinking of, I don't think. Panic. I might have been thinking of the Smiths. Actually, there might be a... It's for some by Blur or somebody. Or maybe the Red Hot Chili Peppers is called Don't Panic. This is quite chilled out, by the way. I will... It's this thing. So, yeah. <laughs> How did we get onto... What, what were we thinking about before we spotted the CPU usage? Um... Oh yeah, we're talking about linking, weren't we? Linking between p different people, as it says here. <laughs> I'm assuming the destination you know, if possible. Yeah. The configuration, we might want to just add. Just the idea of like, I don't know, like project info of um, you know, so we kind of have. It's kind of like a. It's essentially like a base URL, really. You know, so they'd have a base URL. Although. I mean, what I'm basically thinking of here is that. Say, like, we're in a. Say, like, we're in a handmade hero annotation. And we just sort of say. I mean, if we if we just say Ray like this inside one of your annotation that well, let me just do it in here. Right, so that we've got this here, and we just say Ray. I'm thinking that should that should actually show up as. A link to a link to basically this, right? What's that? Oh no! Well. <laughs> Well, there's no information in there, is there? <laughs> is that at all related to cute browser just not being able to generate that or something? <laughs> Content should be this, it's saying. Does it look like that for you guys? That looks right. Uh, 
Okay. So the content is like this. Oh, it's getting generated as a tick. So yeah, so those things, it's, they are the same. Uh, actually, I could, could also see, is it the same in the watch page? Yeah, so that's okay there. And it's okay there. Okay, just must have been a bug. Well, it's Ray, wasn't it? it was, so it's a different person. So Ray showing like that. And now showing like that. So yeah, there we go. There's um, cute browser probably just being fantastic. <laughs> and probably, I don't know, probably possibly something to do with this CPU usage. But yeah, I was thinking that I'd like, you know, if I, if I put this in, a, in an annotation thing, it would point to this page if it exists. Uh, however, if we're on like Hamid Network, um, and let's just say for the sake of argument that we're on, um, Hamid Hero, right, say that we're here, and this is still this page by the way, it's just that <laughs> I'm on theatre mode, um, Remedy BG. Oh, sorry. No, I was thinking of Ray, wasn't I? Uh, yeah, if you see Ray, then it would point to it would point to this page here. Ah, I'll tell you what, actually. This might just be fine, actually. What I'm basically driving at here is having a way to link to this page here. And we do have that because the this this thing here is hero. Right. So like um all these people here are parented by by this by this dude here. So you could actually then just say, if you say hero, because he hero, this, this actual identifier doesn't apply to any of these. And even if it did, you could have a parent, you could have a child who's the same name as the parent, but if it's got a, pa if it's, if it's hero parent, uh, then you would do this. I wonder if the way that you would link to Ray is actually to do this. All right. So you do that. Yeah, and in doing that it would it would break the configuration thing would actually figure out that you want to link to this. Right. And then, if you want to link to Ray zero zero, in particular, you do that. Could that be done? Could that happen? This is like a top level thing. I guess I guess you'd search through you'd first of all when you go through when you're looking when you're actually trying to find this goddamn thing, you go into the database and you search through the top level people. Yeah, basically all the parents for Hero. And then you search through the children of Hero for Ray.
Um, but also because this itself um, has a forward slash after it, this thing here has to be a, a, an actual project itself. So you're searching through the project children of Hero. And then when you come to here, you search through the whole lot. You know, you search through raised children, uh, project children, if any. And their entry children, essentially, to end up here. Right. And then I'd also like to be able to say, link to this time code in this file, <laughs> in this guy here. Right. Now I don't know what syntax we should use. I mean, maybe actually you just do this. You just stick another one of those those guys on, and then you just do that. <laughs> maybe that could just work. <laughs> and actually, now I think about it, this is an HMM lib feature, isn't it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> so this would be another thing to ask kids if I was about. It's about uh, Zelensky can confirm uh, Jesse rather. <laughs> oh shit! Could that be the server then, just serving up the wrong thing? Hmm. That's unfortunate. I never spotted that before. But yeah, like now it's fine. Yeah, it's just. I mean, we both saw it, didn't we? So it could be the server that just served it up busted. <laughs> Who knows? Um, actually, let me get off that page. <laughs> uh, so yeah, basically, <laughs> we were thinking about, yeah, just linking to various things. And having a project of things. So yeah, right. So in this case here, <laughs> I think we've kind of solved it, haven't we? Because we were saying you'd link to the, you'd link it in this way, right? And hero itself would just link to the um, it would just link to this this page here uh, and then hero slash ray would link to the person that I was looking at before it linked to this ray zero zero would link to this and then ray zero zero eighteen thirty five would link to this maybe that would just, would just be perfectly fine uh, and then you've solved the problem of how to link to remedy bg However, you'd still need an entry in your configuration file to say, depending on how you want to display these links, you know, like you want to display, I mean, this is already the same thing, but say that you want to display, say that you put hero. You want to write that out as handmade hero. Or if you write code, actually, you want to write out handmade hero. Or if you write Ray, you want to write out handmade Ray. You don't want to just write out the actual code name. 
Code Clap's another one because Code Clap has a an interesting sort of a syntax, an interesting spelling for it, doesn't it? Right, it's spelled like this. You'd want to spell it with the with the brackets. So you'd want to store that information. You'd want to point your config file. The project has this ID. It's code clap, just spelled like that. But the actual title of it is this spelled like this. And then when you see that in your annotations, you just output. Output the link to this using this title and the just the you know the URL thing. Uh, to actually point to the thing and yeah to do that you just uh, you literally just say code clap like that then you link yeah maybe that just solves that so so the config file put it over there annotations just put it link to them yeah that's just that solved um yeah. D B template representation add that add to D B entry header yeah. Storing template of database. I guess implied implicit in the title of this note is that we actually want to have a watch handle. For templates, okay. Tell you what, I am going to um, <clears throat> I'm going to wrap up basically now, really, <laughs> and get some food because I'm getting pretty hungry. But I think I'll just before I do that. Um, I'm just going to just, just paste in here. The actual stuff that we need to to actually um to actually store in the config. Poison not eliminating term directly in the file memory, that's not what I'm gonna be doing. Configuration video and yeah, I think we need to think about that. Patreon access to private videos, we need to think about that as well. Because that'll be more than just the config, that'll be actually how you generate the stuff and how you actually permit access to it. It'd be, it'd be pretty sweet actually if I can figure out a way. Uh, so the, the authentication thing that I've made for Risky Business, the access, is called Silken. It'd be pretty sweet if I can figure out a way to make Cinera issue Silken an instruction to say... Actually, that's complete bullshit. That can't happen at all. Because because uh, Cinera's never going to know. Cinera doesn't have access to... He doesn't have access to... Um, to the visitors, basically. To the visitors of the site. You know, and it can't, it can't get the, uh, it can't get any cookie information from visitors' browsers because it's just not, it's just not involved in that process. Uh, so yeah, it would have to be. Yeah, it'd have to be something a bit more in depth. Uh, so yeah, something to think about. Uh, prototype, prototype, uh, yes, we've just been talking about all of that, right? And then the stuff that we actually actually need, right? It's going to be basically most of this, honestly. We're going to just be moving essentially all of this whole, all of these arguments into the config, right? Uh, in fact, let's just take it from paths. Can we do H? I can do that. You see, Tmux is great. It just uh, it just sort of does it as you'd expect. 
like Vim, Vim key style. I think all the way down to here would be fine. And then the examining the database version and help. I think they can be they can exist. You know they can, they can remain as as uh, actual flags that you pass. I might have to set paste. So yeah, essentially all of these guys here. going to uh, oh no Is it, I need to retab this don't I that's one problem I think when you paste it's when you paste stuff in from you know, it's, is it expand tabs how do you do this See like that. That's like that. <laughs> Tab expand. What is it? <laughs> oh, I just don't. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh. Yeah, that's got it. This, this is, that's done it fine, right? For some reason, the paths, this particular line here. <laughs> I think that's done it. What was the problem though? Smart tab. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, I think when I when I do when I do the next stream, I'll just like I'll just trim this thing down so it doesn't look so so it's a bit it's just a bit more compact. We want to store this information here. Just the credentials, isn't it? I mean, honestly, like the support icons. Could we make that a bit a bit more configurable? Possibly, we could do. Um, and then just let people. Well, actually, yeah, we could totally do that, couldn't we? Because in the credentials thing, we're actually using this information, right? You know, we're just saying, use that. Uh, so, I mean, we provide this. Cinera itself provides these sprites, but we could just say, uh, we could figure out some sort of scheme for actually allowing people to provide their own sprites. I think we'd have to actually specify Specify the the dimensions of those sprites, and the um, the sort of uh, layout of them, uh, and then you know so that our, so that our stuff can actually you know show the right stuff, basically. Uh, but yeah, we need to we want that to be configurable. We want the credentials to be configurable. We want the yep, we want the category medium to be configurable as well. Yeah, see, potentially to make this written name configurable per project. Yep, we definitely would do want that. Basically that that means that <clears throat> handmade hero, for example, could have when you do run, when you use the run category, uh, it would show up as it'd say in game 
essentially. Uh, so you should be able to see that. In fact, it's a, are there any instances of running? Yeah, there is an instance of running here. Right, so all these guys here, well, actually, you can just see it straight away in the filter menu. <laughs> it just sort of says in game. Right. Uh, I mean, technically, here, pass HTT, that's, I don't think it's part of the game, actually. It's part of the asset system, I think. Uh, yeah, it is part of the asset, the asset builder. So it's not strictly the game, but I'm sort of thinking that just for a project, they just have a standard thing that it, that it, that, that thing gets called. Um, so how I made here, it would say in game for risky business. However, it could say like in app or something because risky business isn't, it's not making a game. It's making like, well, it's making a whole tool chain basically. So when Mio runs something, it'd be like, it, it's not appropriate to say in game. It'd be better to say something else in app. Similarly, Blackboard. Um, Casey's Blackboard is a Blackboard. Do we have Blackboard here? No. It is a Blackboard, but Mio's Blackboard is actually a whiteboard. So, you know, you could sort of change. You can make that say a different thing, depending on what, what project you're on. Uh, so that was category medium. We've done the credentials, category medium, and then the project info, yeah. I think that's the last thing. I'll just see if we got any of these edit types inserted dependent. That's our edit types. Oh, that's not idea. I can just go through all the thing we do. As it type names, probably fine. That 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 is just ours. Our you know our types. Template tags definitely ours. Built-in assets, obviously built-in assets, built-in so it's ours. File names set by init built in assets. Template tags is ours again. Support icons, yeah, so they're just down to this that we've already done. Support icons, credentials, category medium, project info, call strings is ours, edit types is ours. Dest, what's dest? Coffee string into a dest. I wonder why I bother doing it as a an array like that. I wonder why I did it in that, like that there, but like this here. Okay, so that's that's the model. So I think that this is the this is all the information that we actually need to be storing. Um, sorry, this is all the stuff that we need to be configuring in the config. I mean, in particular, actually, these these ones down here, actually, the uh, not the product info so much, but the category medium and the credentials. These are the ones in particular that, that I'm thinking we should be able to include them. Right. Because there could be, we might, you know, an annotator might want to add, <clears throat> they might want to add like new ones of these for a particular day, you know, a particular set of annotations. And, you know, if you can include it, it allows them to do that without having to actually like, you know, update the entire, you know, without needing to get the administrator to, to do it essentially because adding this sort of information isn't really it's not really a thing that it's not really sensitive information for want of a better word and it's something that I feel like it's it's something that the an annotator might as well just be able to do do themselves uh, yeah so I think that is all that's basically what we want to be storing we do need to figure out the format, how we're actually going to write this stuff in the in the config file itself. 
Um, but I think that is going to be that's going to be the next the next day, the next day's task. Uh, how long have we been, been going? A couple of hours, two hours thirty eight. Look how wrapped up I am. It's pretty cold here in sunny Manchester. <laughs> um, the mic is still working. And there's no drop frames either. And that's kind of cool. It's kind of sweet to see that, you know, the we're, we're streaming at the full bit rate. We are scaled down because of Twitch's recommended information, basically. <laughs> oh, I've got on this page again. <laughs> they just sort of say this. So there's no higher, there's no higher resolution <clears throat> than 1080p so I scale it down to that but yeah we're up at 5000k kilobits per second and we're just streaming fine so that's pretty nice uh, and yeah just by way of coder to this entire uh, return to streaming I think I should just give a very big shout out to Andrew and Arnold who are my new ISP. Um, they're just like, fantastic. You know, they are kind of no frills, I guess. It's just like straight to the point. Um, like they don't even offer different tiers for speeds. They don't, they don't like sort of, they don't sort of say, right, we're going to, <laughs> you know like the 20 gigabits per sec 20 megabits per second thing is going to be this much 40 megabits per second is going to be this much 60 is this 80 is this it's just like nope we're just going to offer <laughs> it's just you just get um whatever your line can support which in our case is between 70 and 80 megabits per second it's that's just that's just how our thing works uh, because it's fiber to the cabinet uh, so we've got a cabinet down the road it's fibre to that and then we've got a copper wire to our premises so presumably just the way that whole thing works is that like you know you can only it only supports up to 80 megabits per second I think uh, so yeah that's what we get um, we get a quota so you get like 200 gig we're on the 200 gig a month um, which is actually perfectly fine for us. That's only for download. Um, so uploading is just free. For some reason, it, like they can just offer unlimited upload. So uh, to just today, I mean, I, I mean, probably most of this is actually probably from today. I've uploaded six point eight gig, <laughs> right? Like I can just do that every day if I want, and it's just like, yeah, that's fine doesn't account to your quota I should also mention it was 80 megabits per second down and 20 megabits per second up so that's kind of like why uh, that's kind of like we, why we didn't drop any packets uh, yeah is that right actually because we've got 20 megabits per second up that's Kibby bytes. Let me just actually just say <laughs> um, convert. It's probably like this actually. Actually, it's probably like even further like this. Actually, no, it's too well. Let's just, let's just say yeah. Let's let's convert this to. Twenty megabits per second to kibibits per second. Okay. So apparently, yeah, I've got way, I've got loads of headroom. Like, look at that. I'm like about a quarter of what I can actually upload at, and I'm uploading at the speed, uh, the quality that they just sort of say that Twitch say that you can do. So yeah, uh, you get the you get the quota. And the uh, the thing about thing to understand about the quota is that I didn't realise this, but 
apparently uh, the cost to the internet service provider like the stuff that they have to spend there that they have to actually pay for themselves it's completely linked to the, the amount of stuff that they transfer right so that's why they have a that's why they have a quota um it just sort of makes it like i don't know just a sustainable a sustainably run thing really yeah you know, like they charge the customers a sustainable amount in our case 45 quid a month they deliver the thing and that's it there's no messing about they don't get oversubscribed and pff, frankly just just having a quota probably actually deters a lot of people um because they're like oh yeah i could just like burn through like 200 gig they don't actually know if they're going to burn through it but they just sort of say yeah i just reckon i could do so i i want to have unlimited uh and then you find that you end up in a situation where you're on a network with people who actually do use like terabytes upon terabytes of stuff you only you only need like a hundred yourself or something but because because of the way that because isps are charged because they have to pay for the stuff that they transfer they actually kind of can't deliver the service to you um because of this person who got unlimited and they they just they can get away with it the person who uses unlimited can get away with it because that's just what the isp offer i mean i don't actually know how i don't i don't know if people like like casey like i don't know if i don't know how his works so i mean he's like he's on like gigabit per second up and down i don't know if he's got a quota uh, and i don't know how the uh you know, if he hasn't got a quota, I don't know how the ISP can actually provide the service. Maybe they just, maybe it's just, they just charge a sensible amount so they can actually, they can deliver effect, uh, you know, effectively unlimited for the price that they charge. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Andrews and Arnold, if you are on an internet connection which is not delivering what you want, and you would like to be on one, highly recommended. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, with that out of the way, uh, that's the stream done. Two and three quarter hours. So we've done some planning as we wanted to do. Um, tomorrow, probably tomorrow, probably we'll just continue with doing it every day, probably. Um, we will actually figure out some sort of format. We'll probably just spec out like a, a sort of fake config file. I mean, maybe just a config file that we, we could actually use. Spec that out in a similar fashion to how uh, to, the, to the way that Casey did actually, to the way that he did with the um, the assets metadata file. Um, spec that out and then just pass it, I guess. I probably will. I probably will tokenize it. You know, I'll probably do a proper parser for it. So I'll tokenize it and then pass it. Um, we need to think about. Uh, well, I mean, yes, yeah, passing it itself actually. That would be that would be a whole other process it's, itself, uh, because we will need to pass it into. Uh, structs that we can actually switch between because if you think about it if we're going to have multiple projects in this thing we're only going to have you know only only diff only sort of subsets of that stuff is going to be appropriate for a given uh, file for a given input file so I think we're going to have to have a way to actually switch between, to, you know, to to um to represent a project worth of stuff separately 
from another project and have the ability to switch between them as needed. Uh, so we'll have to think about that and, and that'll be part of the parsing. Um, the tokenizing itself can just happen. It doesn't matter how we, how we end up representing it in memory. The tokenizing can happen um, independently of that. So we'll probably, we'll probably just do that, really. Um, and then once we've got that in place, we want to be able to do the hot reloading. So, yeah, so that'll require having like a a watch handle for the config thing. Um, but yeah, this is all. It's all part of what will what will come is through the course of developing this thing. Um, as we will see. So yeah, thank you very much, Heroes and Heroines, for tuning in, for being fantastic. Thanks especially to Insafarad, actually, for... Um, I mean, I've done, I've done nothing here but talk for the last three hours. I haven't implemented a single thing. I did print out some curled stuff, didn't I? But that was about it. And I've obviously I wrote, I copied and pasted this stuff in as well. Um, but yeah, insofar as updated HMM lib while we were just, uh, while we were doing it. Uh, so we were all set up there. Although, I think we did figure out, didn't we? Uh, that we figured out that the parsing of, uh, you know, this this thing up here, the, um, where is it? Well, we didn't write it, did we? But it's basically the, it was the idea of, uh, you know, doing like hero ray, ray zero zero. I think that was what, what it was, wasn't it? 1835, passing this sort of thing here, you know, if, if, you've, if you put that in, a, in an annotation, I think this would be the responsibility of HMM lib to actually Pass out, I guess. I mean, having said that, actually, maybe it isn't. We'd have to think about that. It might be, it might be HMM, lib, HMM Lib's responsibility, or it might be our responsibility to just take this stuff and just split it up into, the, into its component parts and then for us to use as we need to use it um, yeah we'd have to see but anyway as far as added added some of the stuff that we needed uh, added the, the stuff that we asked for <laughs> and I think that's a I think that's a thinking that's a thinking cap I think it is uh, yeah so yes Wrapping up, thank you very much again, Heroes and Heroines. Uh, this is the last, uh, yeah, it's the last, um, it's the last thing to do, actually. This config file is the last thing to do before I can then go and sort of start to approach new people and try and get new clients and uh, hopefully bring index videos to the, uh, to the masses. So, yep, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Farewell for now.